Hello and welcome to the Horticulturalists. I'm Stephen Ryan. And I am Matthew Lucas. We do post every week on Friday, so hit subscribe and the notification bell if you want to hear about our continuing and ever-growing horticultural adventures. And today, Matthew, we're going to look at some slightly bizarre plants, but that's nothing unusual for us. Stephen, slightly bizarre is your middle name yes. in the nicest possible way. <laughs> yes. And one happens to be right behind us, so why don't we go and have a look? Okay. Stephen, I have oft looked at this diseased shrub and teased you about it, but is this what we're looking at today? It is, in fact. We're going to discuss contorted yes. and devaricated plants. Aha. Uh -huh. Two similar looking but quite different aspects of plants. All right. So I'm presuming we're starting with contorted. We are indeed. And yes. this one is, in fact, commonly known as the contorted filbert. Um, so there you go. Is a filbert a hazelnut? A filbert and a hazelnut are almost the same thing. Yeah. The filbert has a leafy bract that uh, forms around the nuts. Yeah. Uh, hazelnut doesn't tend to have as big a leafy a bract, but the flavour, as far as I can work out, is basically the same between a filbert and a hazelnut. So there you go. Sure, yes, there you and are. they're both of the same species. So what's this name? This is Corallus avalana contorta. Contorta. Yes, and commonly known as contorted or crazy filbert. Yep. Sometimes the older folk out there will call it Harry Lauder's walking stick. Uh, Harry Lauder was a comic way back in England that had this weird, strange, curly walking stick. So okay. there you go. Now but that's a, a name that's That's sort of, a reference that many of us might not get yeah, anyway. Yeah, exactly. So it's a deciduous shrub, small yes. tree. Yes. And... We have to sort of work out a few things. What is contortion? What, what causes it? Yes. And it's a genetic disbalance that becomes mm. stable. Yeah. So if somebody finds a plant with a contorted branch on it yeah. or a seedling that comes up that has a contorted shape, mm. then it's a genetic disbalance. Mm. And if you propagate from that plant, mm. you will end up with more of the same. So but it is on. stable. But propagating it meaning only from cuttings. Oh yes, yes. It's like variegation. Most mm. variegated plants need to be grown from cuttings yeah. or grafted or whatever. As do these plants because if you did get seed on them, the seed is likely to throw back to the wild form. Now, why would a plant do this? It doesn't do it on purpose. <laughs> so. <laughs> Contortion is just a, a freak of nature that yeah. to people who are in the commercial trade have picked up on. It's seen as an interesting and quirky conversation piece type plant. Some mm. people love them, some yeah. people hate them. Yeah. It doesn't really matter as long as you <laughs> like them. And it causes conversations, which mm. is fantastic. Mm. And they can make an interesting sculptural element in the garden. Well, let's get to that. So this um, is a filbert, yeah. or, you know, a hazelnut. So that's not a particularly big I mean, it's a small tree, isn't it? A large shrub. Small yeah, tree. large shrub, small tree. This particular plant was given to me by my mother for my 18th birthday was it? party. Oh, yes. and I've disparaged it. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah. Stephen's mother. Yeah, well, there you go. What can I say? As you can see, it's grown to about four or five metres. It got burnt almost to the ground I by the Ash Wednesday bushfires. It had to have survived the fire. Yeah, it got burnt down, but there was enough. Uh, at the base for it to reshoot again wow. and so it's been part of my life for most of my life so yeah, there you yeah. go and so I have a great soft spot for this particular plant. Oh I can imagine. Yeah. Do you propagate from this? You ca I have done and I can but I do also buy them in. One thing I will say about this particular plant mm. never buy a grafted one. Oh Yes, yeah, yeah. I thought you would be a bit surprised Why? by that. Because I would have thought that was the easiest way to guarantee its habits. Uh, yes, but it's the problem with grafted ones, filberts and hazelnuts sucker, and so the understock will sucker forever. Right. So, bless mum, she bought me one which happens to be grafted because back in the, <laughs> in, in, back in the day that was the only sort you could get and every year I have to get underneath it and rip out the suckers that come up from the understock. Everything is a learning opportunity. It yeah. is. So if it wasn't for the fact that this was my mother's gift it probably wouldn't still be here. Mm. I would definitely plant one on its own roots mm. and the way you create them on their own roots is to actually dig up a whole filbert, a whole contorted filbert mm bury it in a trench with bits sticking up and then two years later you chop it all up into pieces that have taken root and you've got a whole batch of newbies. 
Oh my goodness, that sounds bizarre. It is, but that's the way it's propagated. Other than its contorted stems, the other thing that is so beautiful are these catkins. Now, are these, these are flowers, aren't yes, they? Yes, they're flowers. They're the male flowers. Yeah. And I'll find you a these girl flower. Little, little uh, yes. pink ones. The yeah, reds. little tiny red oh, bits goodness, are the female are flowers. Tiny. So we'll get a close up of that in a minute. So this is the male flower. They're wind pollinated, so hence they don't want petals and things in the way. Right. So they're basically a structure made up of of a few little bracts with lots of pollen in there yeah. and it will waft around and cross pollinate. And it's late winter, so typical season for these to be in bloom? Yes, they come out when, they, when they're bare in the winter. Yeah. I might add something that people need to be aware of. This is the time I would sell you one because this is the time where it looks at its best. Mm. I regularly get people who come back if I haven't thought to warn them because a lot of contorted plants mm. are not just contorted in their stems they actually have contorted leaves as well and this is why i have always looked at this and thought oh that is such a disease ridden plant because yeah. its leaves look like they've got a terrible virus no they haven't they're just <laughs> genetically um curled and twisted just as the stems are mm. so people are regularly surprised when the foliage comes out on these trees note to self yes exactly um, now the other thing you did mention which we'll show everyone is that there aren't that many catkins this year, Stephen. Uh, yes. Whenever we decide on a storyline, I am sure that somebody steps in and says, let's muck it up a little bit for them. This has never happened before, but this whole tree should have been covered in catkins now. But the rosellas, uh, our local parrot species, have decided to come in and they've cleaned two thirds of the catkins out of the tree before we got round to doing the filming. So we've only got a few bits left, unfortunately. Because it would look amazing, like an amazing tassel thing. Yes. But, but no. No, unfortunately, but you know, s such is nature. Well, you're providing for the wildlife. Well, I think we might go and look at a plant in your garden that is also contorted, or maybe even two. Yes, a couple see of them. what other sorts of plants there are. Yes, what a good idea. All right, Stephen. This looks like a flowering camellia. And in fact it is. It's a form of Camellia japonica, yes. uh, which is one of the classic species camellias. And this particular variety arose in Japan. Yep. And the Japanese love plants that are aberrant forms, weird contorted plants, variegated plants, yes. uh, all that sort of thing. Yep. So this is a contorted Camellia japonica and its cultivar name is Anruyu, and my Japanese pronunciation may, might leave, not be up yeah, to scratch. may not be up to scratch, but anyhow, the best I can do. And apparently it translates as cloud dragon, yeah. which is a mythological creature uh, in Japan. And many plants have ended up with the same name that have contorted foliage or contorted stems. So there you go. So Anruyu, and it has very attractive single deep pink flowers on it. I was gonna say, the flowers are really, really beautiful, but but the, the, the stems are amazing. Um, but I mean, is it, is it that dramatic? It's not as dramatic as some because yeah. generally contorted plants are deciduous. Exactly. So when they drop their foliage, that's when they come into their own. Yeah. This camellia, what I'll be doing with it over the years is actually thinning it and opening it up. So I'll be pruning it to open up the form right. so that you can actually look into the plant a bit more. Right, 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 right. So that's the plan long term. Okay, because otherwise it does just look slightly curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, it does. I, I mean, but that's, you know, that's part of the fun of having it. The flower, of course, is very much of the wild Camellia japonica form. So yes. uh, it could even be a form that arose in the wild that mm. somebody was quick enough to notice, mm. or it could just as easily have been one that uh, arose in cultivation. So some clever nursery person leapt on it and started propagating it. So the there you go. evil wheels of horticultural commerce. General care same as camellias. Yeah, uh, these contorted forms of any plant tend to be much the same as far as their hardiness yep. and their cultural requirements as their uh, normal Less stem. Less contorted cousins. Yes, that's right, <laughs> the, the normal form. So mm. wherever you can grow a camellia japonica, you should easily be able to grow this cultivar, yep. um, both in the ground and in a tub. Is it easily found? Uh, it's one of those cultivars that lurks around in the trade a bit, but you don't yeah. see it around all that terribly often. Yeah. Uh, There's a few nurserymen in Australia that have had it off and on on their lists, mm. but it's not one of those things that is just general nursery fodder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how old is it going to be, or how many years until you actually start thinning it out? Well, I've actually started just slightly 
keeps opening it up recently. So yeah. uh, I will do it as a gradual process. This plant's, what, a metre and a half tall now. Yeah. Uh, it's been in the ground about two or three years. It was a reasonably advanced plant when I put it in. Mm. So I got a, a nice big one to plant. Yeah. And because of its contorted growth, it's not going to grow with the same you know, sort of height speed as a classical camellia yes, would. Yeah. And in fact, my whole plan is not to allow it to get terribly much taller than it is, mm. but have it coming out and branching out and sort of sweeping in different directions. Ah. Uh, so eventually it will actually become quite a striking plant. Sounding very high maintenance to me, Stephen Ryan. No, it's an artistic <laughs> pursuit. You've got to look at it from that perspective. Now, quick segue. I've noticed seed pods here. Yeah. So propagating this. So you couldn't guarantee that the seed would turn out to be Oh, uh, in fact, I would tend to suggest, not that I've tried it because yeah. I've always grown this from cuttings, but I would suggest that if you did raise the seed off this camellia, yeah. more than likely it will throw back to the original parent form yeah. because these genetic imbalances generally don't carry through in the seed. So cuttings only. Yes, and not hard to grow. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to the next contorted specimen. All right, let's go and have a look at another one. More contortion, Stephen? Yes, and this time it's another plant that has edible relatives. Yes. And this is a contorted form of the white mulberry. Aha. Uh -huh. So botanically, Morus alba unruyu. Yes. Uh, a Japanese selection. Yep. Will grow into a smallish tree, large shrub, but of course is always prunable. Yes. Uh, and would make a fantastic tub specimen. Oh, okay. And unlike the contorted filbert, it's big, glossy, non-contorted leaves make it actually quite a good feature plant through the warmer months of the year mm. as well as when it's bare in the winter. Mm. This looks absolutely stunning. It looks great as it is. This is, is a, quite a small specimen though. Yeah. yeah, just a little baby one. Yeah. Uh, they grow fairly quickly. Mm. I've seen it put on almost a metre a year and it'll be multiple stem from the bottom so yeah. it, it will be a very very interesting and strange contorted plant. So where would you plant that then in the garden given that it's going to be quite bowl like and quite large? Yeah well you certainly need to allow it some space if mm. you're going to allow it to grow to its full size. I would use it as a major feature plant perhaps mm. in a courtyard somewhere where you just want a statement. A bit of, <laughs> bit of contorted beauty. Yes exactly so there you go so and I've got one more plant. I was going to say, yeah. I think there's something else in your repertoire. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I have something else in my repertoire. Look at uh, this. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yes. yes. Now, I feel I've seen this. Well, you may have seen it around. It's not an uncommon plant. Yeah. It's commonly known as a corkscrew rush. Uh, Strangely enough. Yes. And it's botanically known as Juncus effusus spiralis. Yeah. And it's one of the few things I know of that has this contorted type growth that is obviously restricted to the leaves because yep. it doesn't have stems, yes. uh, but also that will come tr somewhat true to seed. So I've had uh -huh. seedlings of this pop up that have the same contorted form as uh, the original. Now, is it my imagination or is that winding around itself so is that a climb a creeping no no it's no. just an accident yeah just an accident if it does that oh, okay. now this is the sort of plant that will always make a conversation piece yeah it's sun loving requires moisture to wetness so mm -hmm. pot saucer of water sitting yeah. on the barbecue table perfect so could it be a margin plant on oh, the yeah. edge of a pond? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can grow it even into shallow water, yeah. so it can be used in that way as well. Mm. And it's a fabulous plant to introduce children into horticulture because kids like the bizarre, the interesting, the different. They love the cactuses, uh, they love the insectivorous plants. Yes. They want things that are quirky. So this one fits the bill, in fact, could have well been in a Dr. Seuss book. It, it is. Where's it from originally? Uh, it's European and again, it would have arisen <coughs> as a freak mutant seedling somewhere, mm. either in cultivation freak or... Freak mutant seedling? <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, it's not Dot a mutant com. turtle, that's for sure. But um, I think it makes a fabulous pot plant mm. and it will stimulate conversation around the barbecue table if you can't think of anything else to talk about. Now, how big is it going to get? Because this, uh, is, this is, I'm presuming, a smallish... This is a baby, mm. but uh, it will only get leaves up to around about 30 centimetres long. It's about a foot. Yeah, and the plant itself clumps so it becomes broader and broader in the pot mm. you can in fact lift it out divide it up put smaller pieces back and share it with all your friends yeah. uh, and I just think it's such a quirky plant that uh, everybody loves it now you mentioned it's true to seed how does how would this flower 
it does flower it's a rush and it gets little clusters of brownish flowers yeah. that form near the top of the um the stems uh -huh. so uh, this one obviously is too young to start doing so mm. uh but it will it'll get little brown flowers of no particular ornamental value but that's how it procreates it's all about the contortion mm, it is indeed <laughs> Well, Matthew, not all contorted things are small shrubs in a garden, I have to say. No. And we're standing against the trunk of a comparatively old contorted willow. Yeah. So the willows, of course, are salixes. Mm. This particular one is Matsudana tortuosa. Tortuosa. Yeah. What does that mean? Do I, do I need to actually explain it? I no. think not. So, yeah, so it's a great tree if you've got a damp, soggy spot near a pond yes, which we have, have and the root system can go out into the water and suck up moisture because all of the willows of course or pretty well all of them do like damp to wet conditions so yeah. the contorted willow will grow into quite a moderately large tree not as big as its non-contorted form mm. but Is nonetheless that consistent across all contortion yeah, it tends to be because the branches do this oh, I guess they don't just... do as much of that yeah, yeah. so they're going to actually be generally speaking smaller growing than the normal form but this one's probably a tree of uh, five six meters now it's been in the garden here for about 20 years and the reason why you would choose a contorted willow is in win is for its winter contortedness isn't it because yep. I mean, when it's in leaf, do you really see the contortion that much? Well, you do to a certain extent because it does tend to have branches that sort of hang down yeah, yeah, and, uh, and trail and spiral down. Yeah. And because the leaves are narrow, uh, they also curl as well. So you tend to get this sort of bad hair day effect all the time. <laughs> to me though, it is most kind of gothic and spooky as a silhouette in winter because it does look amazing. And I think that's where the deciduous forms that get these contorted forms really come into their own because they become a really interesting winter sculptural element yes. in the garden. Well, you can certainly see that here. And I. Am I right in thinking this is relatively easy to find? Oh yes, um, and in fact some of the uh, uh, willow species of course have become almost feral and weedy so yeah. we do have to be careful about some willows in Australia. But the contorted form is comparatively easy to propagate from yeah. cuttings and as far as I know has never become a major pest problem mm. certainly in Australia. So it's a fairly benign tree, well worth growing in the garden. Mm. Fabulous, on to the next. Oh, why not indeed? Stephen. Let's talk devarication. <laughs> yes. Now, devarication is a slightly different thing from the contorted plants we've been talking about as well. Yes. Devarication is a natural adaption that plants have created to fit into a certain e ecosystem. Mm. New Zealand is the home of the devaricate. There you go. Yes. So, and the reason's fairly straightforward and simple, at least I think it is. Mm. New Zealand had no browsing mammals before people came along. Yeah. It had the giant mower birds. Yes. Birds peck. They don't munch like a, um, a mammal would do. Mm. So therefore, by having zigzaggy branches and small leaves, it made it harder for the mowers to get a decent feed. Isn't that extraordinary? Yeah. So completely unrelated plants have, in fact, developed exactly exactly the, the same, same technique you know that sort of co-evolving uh, yeah. and it's a really interesting thing and anywhere else in the world not so much you'll find the odd thing that throws a devaricated form elsewhere but New Zealand is the home of the of the habit but now we didn't mention what this actually is yes well this is a very strange plant from New Zealand uh, unfortunately somewhat uh, under threat in the wild mm. and it's a thing called Mullenbeckia astonii Mullenbeckia astonii yeah it was named after Henry Gustav Mullenbeck <laughs> who died in 1885 okay he was a Phoenician a physician I should say a physician a doctor and he studied studied the plants of Alsace in France mm. so uh, they commemorated him in this genus mm. and Astonii is one of the few shrubby species in this genus most mm. of them are climbers so the little tiny leaves are, are almost not on the plant at this time of the year because it's semi deciduous yeah. and you end up with this amazing wig of, uh, of, of branches which I think makes an interesting feature in the garden. It is, it's, it is very dramatic. Now, the little leaves, uh, is that the size of the leaves when yep. they're out? Oh my goodness, yep. we'll have to come in and show because yeah, they're they tiny. Are <laughs> microscopic. <laughs> yeah. And they tend to, during the summer months, have a slightly brownish color because yep. birds, of course, don't see brown well either. So clever, so clever. Does it flower? Yes, it gets minute little tiny 
sort of fleshy petaled flowers that are white yeah. with a little black seed that sits in the middle of them mm. and they're edible. Ah, and given that it's, it's threatened, how easy is it for you to propagate it? It's a weird thing because when I first obtained cuttings of this plant from a yeah. grower in another part of Victoria, yeah. they struck very well the first year I put the cuttings in. Yeah. I have had almost no success since. So I'm going to have to have another crack at it and see where I've gone wrong. I'm not quite sure what I did in the first instance yeah. that worked so well and hasn't since. Isn't that odd? Yeah. But what about the seeds? Uh, it hasn't produced any viable seeds to my knowledge yet and I'm not sure that it may not need a cross pollen. It might need a friend. Yes, it might need a friend. It looks very much like a fairy story tangle of thorns that you have to hack through. What yes. an amazing plant. It is, it's a wonderful thing. So Muhlenbecki or Astonii from New Zealand. Uh, Stephen, Contortion 101 and you have to say the other word again. Devarication. Devarication. <laughs> I don't know why, I just can't remember that. Yeah. That's fascinating though about how completely different species evolve the same solution. It is. It's, it's amazing how often a, a, a solution is found by one plant which seems to be picked up by other things that need the same thing. Maybe it's viral. <laughs> I doubt it's Somehow. Well, that was fantastic. Now, I do, of course, love your mother's tortured filbert. <laughs> yes, good. Fantastic. Mum would be pleased. She would be pleased that it's, and that it survived the bushfire. That yep. is amazing. Mm -hmm. How could we top this, Mr. Ryan? Do we well, need to? Well, we probably don't need to top it, but we'll certainly be back next week with some sort of horticultural daring do. Who knows? Indeed. We post every Friday, so do hit subscribe if you want to know what that adventure might be, and we look forward to seeing you then. Goodbye all. <laughs>